thanks for tuning in yet again to BT Prime. And uh, we are in conversation with arguably the vaccine king of the world, if you will, uh, Adar Punawala. And as much as I want to talk about the business, Adar, thank you for joining in first day. And can I first start off with a couple of um, a patient or a, or a, or a COVID watcher questions? Uh, the world seems to be getting back uh, to some concerns because of what's happening in China. How do you look at that situation? Thank you, Neeraj. Uh, great to be here uh, talking with you. You know, uh, the world is concerned before, I think, uh, fully reinvesting in whether it's supply chains or other things. Of course, India is the best choice because you, you, you see what's happening in Russia and China and other parts of the world. But, you know, um, India is very secure. Firstly, I must just uh, reiterate that point because of our excellent uh, coverage, uh, you know, thanks to Modi ji and the government, um, we're one of the highest covered countries, more than 90% in our vaccination uh, track record, uh, given such a large population. Having said that, uh, you know, recently Covovax, uh, our vaccine, which is very effect effective against the Omicron and other sub-variants, um, is now licensed. So those who want to take a booster, the elderly, the vulnerable, uh, or anyone who's traveling, um, it's available now. And I, I really think uh, that's something to look at. Uh, if you feel still a bit uneasy looking at what's happening. And, you know, coming back to the China point, we all hope that they get over their issues. And uh, we're trying to even offer our vaccines to them, vaccines from the West, uh, vaccines made in India, because the sooner they take a, a good booster vaccine, it will certainly help them curtail infections, hospitalizations and deaths. So yeah. we're hoping that they appeal to that. And uh, let's see what happens. You, you reckon it's a bit of a unique case that China is going through because of whatever they may have? Well, it's not unique. You know, it's because of the policy decisions they had made of a zero COVID policy. So you didn't have a lot of infections early on, uh, building of herd immunity, uh, even the vaccine choices that they had and made, um, you know, uh, refused to take the, some of the other vaccines from the West. And, um, uh, you know, you can see the contrast where yeah. we are compared to them now. Yeah, most certainly. So, uh, Adar, now let me try and... So, in, India is safe, you reckon? Yes. From a COVID perspective? Yes, and especially with all the measures the government and the precautions, even the recent precautions the government has taken, I think uh, we're in a very good position. I'm glad. A lot of chatted around how India will experience a COVID wave mid-Jan. Thank you. No, no, not I, let me that. tell you. See, uh, it, it also goes in line with uh, the lessons from the pandemic and sure. how well we're prepared for future outbreaks and pandemics. I mean, look at our... Uh, genome testing and healthcare and test testing infrastructure, which is now in place. Yes. You know, we no one had all this in 2020. Sure. And you've got stronger health systems, hospitals, uh, more trained healthcare workers. So we are in a very good position, come what may. Look, in the winter months, you do see a spike in flu cases, influenza, pneumonia, COVID. Um, that's to be expected. Sure. It happened last year as well. Sure, sure, sure. Makes sense. Okay, now you, you truly are a global company, right? Very widespread lot of usage of global supply chains and supplying to the world as well. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not particularly an easy world to do business. Is it easing up a little bit from what it used to be? Well, yes. I mean, look, we've also made uh, some strides and acquisitions, in fact, in, in supply chain. You know, mm -hmm. we no longer want to be dependent on importing a lot of raw materials, syringes, vials. We acquired, a, you know, a company, a 50% stake partner with Shot uh, Kaisha. Now it's called Shot Punawala, the Germans to make... Uh, vials and syringes in India, which is what they were doing. And we've invested with them um, uh, and so many other areas. We've never, in fact, imported also things, uh, items from China. Um, uh, we believe in uh, Modi ji's self-reliant uh, strategy for India. I think it's better in the long term. And, you know, whether it's with climate change, pharmaceuticals, the transition to be self-reliant is accelerating because of the disruptions that we're seeing in supply chains, so that India um, has learned that, look, we need to be able to manage on our own. And um, we're making great strides there. So you are able to do a lot of things. Maybe the entire sector isn't. It's still a lot of talk that despite, and, and rightly so, that we, we're trying to do a lot of things in-house, but it takes time. Yeah, it will take a few years, out. certainly. Yeah, I mean, look, the question. pharmaceutical industry has, has been dependent to a certain extent uh, for APIs and raw materials from China, but they exactly. also... You know, I've talked to some of my colleagues there and uh, they also are starting to make their own APIs and everything uh, in India. 
Uh, it takes a little time. Uh, maybe the cost of some of these drugs may increase as a result. Um, but, you know, it's, it's all good in terms of a long-term investment yeah. in the India story. And uh, that's the direction we're all wanting to go in. But a large portion of self-reliance is some years away? Or... Oh, no, no, no. It's, you, you've already seen the change. I think two to three years, you'll see, um, you know, the pharmaceutical industry, at least can't talk about other sectors, um, uh, yeah, uh, to be, uh, you know, uh, fairly self-reliant. That's, that's really music to the ear. Yeah, so uh, good stuff. Um, uh, what about Serum's growth prospects as well? You, I mean, you know, kind of ton of things happening within your company. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a bit about it? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I'm really excited this year because I'm able to get back to the non-COVID vaccines. The vaccines we, we've been working on on our own and with partners for many years. Take, for example, the rollout of the malaria vaccine at the end of this year for the African continent. Mm -hmm. This is in partnership with the University of Oxford. It's uh, completed its phase three trials. It's 77 percent effective, which is a lot more than the existing malaria vaccines on the market. And, um, uh, you know, uh, we've got also the HPV vaccine to prevent cervical cancer in women. Uh, which we hope to roll out in the first quarter or whatever of this year. So, uh, again, in small quantities and in large quantities uh, next year. So, you know, uh, then we've got dengue vaccines coming about in two to three years. Uh, we also hope to roll out a vaccine against uh, five, strange, uh, five strains of the meningitis bacterial disease that uh, plagues uh, mainly the African continent also. So many vaccines... Um, that we're hoping to roll out on. And don't forget, we've been working on these for five to seven years. Sure. Um, uh, that's been the traditional development time of vaccines. And, you know, what's also exciting is that the, the environment that in India that now exists, again, thanks to the Modi government and Modi ji's uh, push on this, is that we'll be able to develop newer drugs, innovation in India and vaccines much faster. Sure. Uh, with faster regulatory clearances, uh, streamlined procedures and things like that. So we're really excited. Uh, it's an exciting time uh, to be a company and working in India and investing in India. And uh, that's been also the uh, shared talk and comments with everyone here. I was going to ask you that. The India chatter is pretty loud here. Uh, what have been your meetings like? Uh, well, you know, everyone um, understands the quality and scale hmm. at which India can operate. There hmm. are very few countries in which... Um, You've seen that kind of success, whether it's in auto, steel, uh, pharmaceutical, so many sectors, IT services, everything. So, um, you know, uh, there isn't much competition to India if you look at it that way. Uh, even on the promenade, you have uh, so Precisely. many states and private sector companies from India showcasing what we're doing. So uh, it's a great story overall. Awesome. Uh, moving away from pharma a little bit, talk to us about Kuganara Finance. I mean, not... Fincorp. It's, yeah, okay. Kuganara Fincorp, excuse me for that. Not that it's not a non-competitive industry if banks and fintechs were not enough, right? I mean, there's a lot well, happening. Well, there's so much demand. I mean, I don't look at it as competition. I think uh, the ecosystem right now, again, with digitization, hmm. which uh, has taken off to a different level now in India, um, it, it's so much easier to have a digitized NBFC and run that in terms of dispensing loans, offering other services, uh, collecting the money. So I'm really focusing on that, uh, on the NBFC operations as well, very uh, strongly. I think India has unlimited potential because, you know, with the growth that we're talking about uh, professionally and personally that everyone is going through, uh, the need for credit mm. is going to keep growing along with that growth to match that growth. Uh, we're more on the retail financing part. We're yes. not giving infrastructure and real estate loans, large ticket loans, smaller ticket loans. I think it's uh, safer there. Uh, not very long term, three years, maximum four year loans. Um, so I think it's a good niche to be in. Uh, we've also got a general uh, insurance and health insurance business, which I hope to expand on as well. Um, again, health insurance is very interesting because it ties in well with our story, mm -hmm. uh, you know, being healthcare providers. And we want to integrate that somehow and provide affordable, widespread, good health insurance to our citizens in India. So uh, these are the three areas that I'm focusing on, serum, the insurance, and, and finance. Yeah. Um, so uh, no, you're focusing on one more area, by the way, right? because you're on record saying as a private investor, one comment of yours was that in real estate, the stock market and other things, you've invested close to 2,000 crores. Now talk to us 
as a well a lot more than that yes okay, well, a lot more than yeah, that yeah but you know we're launching the punawala vision fund uh, we've got we're getting sebi approval soon uh, mm. for that it's a cat two fund cat two fund mm. well startups and privately listed companies along with listed companies so okay. it's going to be a fund having all of that initially with our own capital mm -hmm. and then we'll raise capital from others as we build up the track record as well um at least a billion dollars uh, over the next few years uh, again investing in india is you know at the heart of our corporate strategy of the group so this is in line with that okay one final question i was attending a pwc ceo survey yesterday mm -hmm. and they believe or they mentioned that uh, the only thing that asian and indian ceos are afraid of mm -hmm. is not about what's happening to global growth and otherwise but if they don't innovate then how relevant they would be by the end of the mm -hmm. decade any thoughts on that well look innovation is the heart of growth if you don't innovate you can't just be a generic copycat mm. so you have to be able to innovate and reinvest all your profits in your core business right. uh, serum has always invested reinvested 90% of whatever profits it makes in its own core business that's why we were able to build uh, the capacities and capabilities that we have today okay and that continues perfect Adam. thank you Hi. lovely talking to you thank pleasure. you so much for speaking pleasure. to us today pleasure. and viewers thanks for tuning in pleasure thank you